again, we'll drop the pretense of dealing with general operators and just talk about n cross n or m cross n in this case, complex matrices, okay? So we start with some A that is of size C m cross n. And we'll see as we proceed with the proof, it will really not matter as to whether m is greater than n or less than n, okay? The idea will still carry forward. Hmm. So in general, we can just assume that m is less than n. But everything that we're going to do hereafter, you can check that whether you take n less than m, the same idea will still carry forward, okay? So this is the matrix, no symmetry, nothing. So what do we do? The first thing we do is we look at a A Hermitian A. What can you say about this matrix? No matter what A is, A Hermitian A is of size n cross n, is Hermitian. I shouldn't use the term symmetric when we are dealing with complex matrices. So it's Hermitian. Hmm? All right, where are we going with this? What have we just learned about Hermitian matrices? Diagonalizable by a very precise kind of a basis, an orthogonal basis provided by its eigenvectors, all right? So, <clears throat> A Hermitian A, all right, there is some V which leads us to what exactly? So this is that V, let me just not draw it up here. Yeah. where sigma is equal to diagonal. Notice this very carefully, okay? Sigma one squared, sigma two squared, till sigma r squared, and then zero, zero, zero. How many such zeros? N minus r. Now, it warrants a bit of explanation at this point. Up until this point, okay, there's a diagonal matrix, no problems in admitting. But what I've written here, even till this diag, you will agree. But now what I have written is that these are squares of real numbers, by the way. So these are real numbers. So that means what I'm saying is that these diagonal entries will have to be positive. Why is that true? Why should that be the case? What I'm trying to say is that if I have a matrix like this, then its eigenvalues must be positive. We've actually spoken about this briefly, if you remember in the least squares solution, but now we are making it very explicit. We gave this matrix a kind of a name. We said it's positive definite, of course, when it was real. But now I'm just claiming that such a matrix will always have only positive or at best non-negative eigenvalues. It can never have negative eigenvalues. We know that such a matrix is going to be what? Positive definite, which means that if you hit it with some Y Hermitian on the left and some Y on the right, then it's basically exactly equal to the norm of AY squared. And a norm is always positive, norm squared is also, I mean norm is non-negative, norm squared is also non-negative. Therefore, this matrix is positive. Now suppose this fellow ends up having a negative eigenvalue. Suppose any Hermitian matrix, so just I'll do that as a side note. Suppose P is equal to P Hermitian, I'm going to use this symbol to denote 
positive definite okay and yet there exists lambda belonging to r negative which means negative real of course it has to be real if it's hermitian its eigen values can only be real so let's assume the contrary that there exists lambda negative such that p v is equal to lambda v right what do i immediately have as a consequence if i now take v hermitian p v means v hermitian lambda v which is equal to lambda times the norm of v squared which is then surely negative yeah which is a contradiction because this fellow if it's positive definite for no vector v should i be led to the con conclusion that v hermitian pv is negative but the moment it has one eigen value which is negative so at least it's a necessary condition that every eigen value of this fellow must be non negative as it turns out it's also a sufficient condition and that's also very obvious so this proves necessity of the condition so every eigen value of a positive definite matrix yeah every eigen value of a positive definite matrix must be of course when we say positive definite we normally take real so this hermitian matters not we only take real so p is equal to p transpose is what we say but i'm just generalizing for this matrix also so what we say is that this fellow cannot have negative eigen values because then it would violate the very tenet of positive definiteness but it's also sufficient you see because if i have an orthogonal basis in terms of my eigen vectors right then i can represent every vector as a linear combination of the eigen vectors right and if all those eigen vectors are positive then what do i what do i conclude about it so you take any vector so i'm doing this a little loosely because this is not exactly strictly part of our syllabus but let's say suppose v is equal to alpha 1 v1 plus dot 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 till alpha n vn now if i take v hermitian p v and each of these are eigen vectors remember so because i have sufficient number of eigen vectors that's why i am able to diagonalize it in the first place right and each of those eigen values are at best zero but never negative is what we are claiming right so that means we'll have to relax it to positive definite to positive semi definite yeah i mean i could just say this for instance yeah now if this is the case what does this turn out to be what can i say about this look at pv p acting on this so this is v hermitian times alpha 1 lambda 1 v1 plus dot 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 till alpha n lambda n vn when i hit it with v hermitian on the left then it's v1 hermitian this that leads to alpha 1 lambda 1 when it's v1 hermitian the second term what does it turn out to be zero because these fellows are orthogonal so this exactly turns out to be alpha 1 squared lambda 1 plus alpha 2 squared lambda 2 plus dot 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 again please read this as real now i'm just using the hermitian as a general notational purpose but i mean choosing a complex matrix and saying it's positive definite really makes no sense you're dealing with a real life problem so the matrix will be real in this case but symmetric matrices are a special case of hermitian matrices hmm? so this is just going to be plus alpha n squared lambda n now if all these lambdas are positive or at best zero but not negative then this is going to be greater than or equal to zero so indeed having all eigen values non negative is not just a necessary condition for positive semi definiteness but is also a sufficient condition 
for positive semi definiteness is that part clear because now i assumed i took any arbitrary vector represented as a linear combination of the eigen vectors so this is arbitrary and i'm hitting it with this arbitrary vector v hermitian on the left and v on the right you can just say v transpose pv so then this pv is what p acting on alpha 1 v1 leads to alpha 1 lambda 1 v1 p acting on alpha 2 v2 leads to alpha 2 lambda 2 v2 p acting on alpha n vn gives me alpha n lambda n vn so that's what i've written here now i'm acting on this using v hermitian which is alpha 1 conjugate but then this is real so alpha 1 v1 hermitian plus alpha 2 v2 hermitian plus dot 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 till alpha n vn hermitian so that's what this v hermitian is this object now when this object acts on each individual element the v1 hermitian when it acts on fellows such as v2 v3 is zero so it only filters out alpha 1 lambda 1 and gets multiplied with alpha 1 conjugate or alpha 1 in this case so that's just alpha 1 squared so this is the exact expression that you get and this expression if all your eigenvalues are positive the alpha 1 squared alpha 2 squared alpha n squared these are already positive so positive numbers multiplied by positive numbers and sum together can only lead to positivity unless all of them are zero which is the worst case other than that this is always going to be a positive number right so this is at least positive semi definite right so that means if all your eigenvalues happen to be non negative that is for a symmetric matrix they'll obviously be real so no point in thinking about or worrying about complex eigenvalues that will never that will never occur so these are all real if they are positive real or non negative real that is a sure shot test for positive definiteness and now go back to that uh, least square problem that we approached and we talked about the hessian right and we spoke about why the hessian corresponds you know the sign of the hessian look at the sign of the hessian if it's positive then it's a minima right if it's positive semi definite then it's a it's positive definite it's a minima so checking for that positive definiteness of that hessian is akin to again just checking for the eigenvalues and ensuring that the eigenvalues are all positive instead of checking for every possible vector in every possible direction not that i'm saying that finding out eigenvalues is trivial by the way but i'm saying it's an equivalent condition so non negativity of eigenvalues is not just a necessary condition as highlighted here but it is also a sufficient condition for positive semi definiteness of a symmetric matrix right now we get back to here so now you agree that if i am writing out this form here this is true because this fellow is exactly one such positive semi definite matrix <coughs> right this fellow can only be zero if something belongs to the kernel of a otherwise this is always going to be what the norm is going to be non zero right and positive number therefore so this is positive semi definite therefore its eigen values could be like this where it has exactly r non zero eigen values and the rest n minus r are zero all right so this part is clear so i'll now erase this apparent digression that we took but one that was essential all right so i hope that this so far based on what we've just shown is clear all right what does that mean <clears throat> so a hermitian this fellow contains the eigen vectors of a hermitian a the columns of v are exactly the eigen vectors of a hermitian a and the diagonal entries of sigma which is a diagonal matrix anyway contain the eigen values of a hermitian a which are at best zero but never negative right so let's assume without loss of generality that there are r non zero eigen values and the remaining n minus r are zero you could have chosen r is equal to n doesn't matter hmm? all right so now <coughs> what is the next step that we are going to carry out what is the crucial observation in all of this if you also look at a a hermitian could you not have also seen something similar a a hermitian what holds for a hermitian a also holds for a a hermitian too we can also prove the, this by that route but let us not go by that so what i am instead going to do is i am going to write this down explicitly So we have sigma 1 squared dot dot till sigma r squared 
and then zeros here and zero here and a zero here yeah and this is v1 v2 till vn this is equal to a hermitian a v1 till vn okay let us consider W as another matrix, say like so, sigma 1, sigma 2 till sigma r. So, these are positive numbers, you can always take their positive square roots, right. And let us have this as i identity of size n minus r. right so far so good let us also assume without loss of generality at this point here yeah this is our choice by the way so we can let this be there's nothing to prove in this let sigma 1 squared be greater than or equal to sigma 2 squared so on till greater than sigma r squared greater than 0 this is our choice we can just rearrange the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in such a way to get this there's nothing special in this right nothing to prove here it's my choice if you have two eigenvalues 2 and 3 yeah and the first eigenvector is v1 and the second eigenvector is v2 it doesn't matter if you put v2 first as the first column and v1 as the second column and call the first eigenvector uh, eigenvalue as 3 and the second eigenvalue as 2 it's just an ordering of the basis so this i can always choose it like this so there is some ordering in this a strict monotonic decrease here all right so now the way i have cooked up this w can i not say that this w is going to be invertible it's a diagonal matrix after all just the reciprocals of these terms and these are by default by my definition here these are non zero so their inverses will exist term by term here right so i'm going to erase this part now but I can probably erase the entire part here. So, yeah, we have let us say V Hermitian A Hermitian A V is equal to sigma 1 squared, sigma 2 squared, dot 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 till sigma r squared zeros like so and let us say we hit it with w inverse here and w inverse here that will be similar to w inverse here and w inverse here clear legit operations yeah i'm just doing it don't ask me why you'll see in a moment why but i'm just do, i can, i'm allowed to do this operation is what i'm trying to convince you about agreed now if i do this what happens to the right hand side what is w inverse it's just 1 by sigma 1 1 by sigma 2 so on till 1 by sigma r and these are just again identity and you're hitting it on the left and on the right so what does it do to this diagonal block is it not equal to identity of size r 0 0 0 like so yeah so what is this this is a v w inverse and notice carefully what i'm going to write here i'm going to write a v w inverse the Hermitian thereof, would you agree? Because this fellow is also Hermitian. So whether you take the inverse of uh, W and then the Hermitian or not, it doesn't matter. This is a real matrix. Diagonal matrix is always symmetric. So the inverse of this diagonal matrix is also diagonal. 
therefore also symmetric, therefore whether you hit it with the Hermitian operation or not, it matters not. This is equal to what? The same IR 0, 0, 0, okay. Probably we will stop here at this point for the next module and then we will carry on. But this is an important observation because what is this showing us? What is this? If you write this as a big matrix, say Y, then this is Y Hermitian times Y. So what we will next see is if you split up this Y matrix into columns. So what is the size of this matrix? This is M cross N, this is N cross N, this is also N cross N. So this whole thing is also M cross N. So there are N columns each containing M tuples. So that is how we are going to represent this whole object now. This is Y and this then becomes Y Hermitian. So we will see what this leads us to conclude in the next module.